Just thinking about losing some of my favorite cosmetics makes me really sad. And I know that in itself is actually quite sad. I think everybody kind of has things that are inanimate objects that to other people don't mean much. But to you, it means a lot for whatever reason. And I do feel like that about a lot of my makeup. But this video that's been going around really got me thinking. If I lost all of my makeup for one reason or another, what would I purchase in order to have a functional makeup routine? So I have in front of me to share with you a collection of products that I would go out and purchase in order to build a full face. I have not added up how much all of this costs yet, but you're gonna see on the screen as we go how much my full face would cost. So if that sounds interesting to you, oh, hang tight. We are getting into it right now. I already know. I already know it's coming. I know it's coming because this is going to be a lot of makeup for some people. If you are a casual makeup wearer, this is going to seem excessive. I am warning you ahead of time. But myself not being a casual makeup wearer and somebody that really enjoys this process, I, I need a little extra in my life. But I'm trimming wherever I can. I'm trying to go as low cost as possible. One of the places that I plan to kind of trim the fat, so to speak, is in the primer area, face primer. I would not purchase a face primer if I was starting from nothing. What I would invest in is a good base skincare routine. So I wanna show you a couple of products that I would invest in first. What I usually do for my morning skincare routine is I rinse off my face and then I apply some kind of moisturizer or serum and then sunscreen. A couple of the moisturizers I'm using lately, this one's a little bit less. This is the COSRX Lightweight Soothing Moisture moisturizer, and then also the Elemis Midnight Facial. And I know it says Midnight Facial, which implies that it's good at night, which I'm sure that it's fine, but I like using this during the day. I feel like it pairs really nicely underneath my sunscreen and underneath makeup. But what I want to add as the product that I would purchase is actually this product from Verst. It is the Stroke of Brilliance Brightening Vitamin C Serum. I, I really love to pair vitamin C serums with sunscreen. It's an antioxidant so it's going to help fight free radical damage from the sun's rays and pollution and all of that. And it's just great to wear underneath sunscreen. Speaking of that, these sunscreens that I've been using recently that I'm loving, this one I've been using for a while, this is the Fenty Beauty Moisturizer. This is my absolute fave. This is going to be the one. I don't think I will, as long as she continues to make this, I don't think I will live without this. <laughs> I have repurchased this multiple times and it is fabulous. My favorite thing Thing about this is the smell of it. It smells so good. I don't want to waste too much of it. It's purple. It's beautiful. The smell of it is just this light, fresh, fruity scent, and it smells so good. I can't even like, I can't even with this. It is amazing. But as a second option, I just, this just came into my life and I'm really enjoying it. This is the Laneige Hydro UV Defense Sunscreen. Both of these do not leave a white cast, which I love. I like my sunscreen to be very low maintenance. If I was really on a budget, because neither of those are cheap, I would just buy some kind of basic sunscreen. I would just buy something at the drugstore or whatever, whatever was the cheapest. But if we're really talking about things that I enjoy that I really want in my life, this would be the one. So this is the one we're going to add. That would be my primer for the day. I'm not, I'm not investing in a separate primer because my normal skin doesn't really need a primer. I just need good skincare. So the next step would be foundation and concealer. So for foundation, I would pick this Revlon Illuminant Skin Caring Foundation. This is relatively new to my life as well. It is a fantastic foundation and nice medium coverage, leaves a natural finish on the face. It is not full coverage at all. It's just pretty. <laughs> it's just really pretty. The shade range is wonderful and it's just a good solid product. Lasting power is good. It's easy to blend. No issues at all with this. As an alternative to this though, I did run out of my Sephora Best Skin Ever Foundation. That is another one that I would highly, highly recommend. Concealer wise, this was in my Favorites and Fails Countdown last month. 
month. Some of you may be surprised that there's any makeup revolution in this countdown, but this is a fantastic concealer. I can't deny it, and I've been really loving it lately, so if I lost my makeup today, this is what I would purchase. This is the Revolution IRL filter finish in the shade C4. This is a soft matte concealer. It is a medium to full coverage concealer, blends beautifully. And what stands out about this, and I just talked about this, is I love the paddle on the wand. I love how that applies to all over wherever I need concealing. But the other thing is I don't feel like this settles into my fine lines badly, like at all. If I take it on, it definitely can settle in and I just need to bounce a beauty blender on underneath it or something. But if I put on like a normal amount, which is like two dots here and then two dots over here, I don't need uh, to bounce this out of my fine lines. Freaking love it. An alternative to that, another one that I love is the Flower Beauty. This is the Light Illusion Concealer, but the shade range on this sucks compared to this one. This one is still not fabulous, but this one's worse. So I know I have people with lots of different skin tones that watch my channel. And honestly, like either one of these, they're both good wherever you can find your skin tone is what I would recommend. As far as powders go, I have so many face powders, so many face powders, but the lowest cost one that I love is actually from Sephora brand. This is the translucent setting powder. For me, it's exactly the same as the more expensive powders. It just sets the makeup beautifully. It takes away shine without making me look too matte and flat. And it's just a good solid powder. I have nothing bad to say about it. I honestly, I'm not 100% sure whether this makes my makeup last longer or not. I've never paid attention to that. <laughs> I'm going to be 100% with you on that. But as far as setting my makeup and making my face look good, yes, this is awesome. Even though I do not use a face primer, eye primer is always a thing. And this has been my favorite for at least five years. This is the Ulta Matte Eye Primer in Nude. And it is wonderful. It replaced Urban Decay Primer Potion for me. That's how long ago. <laughs> I found this in my life was when Urban Decay Primer Potion was like the thing. It does have a tiny bit of tint to it. So if you're my skin tone and you wanted to kind of even out your skin tone on your lids, this is perfect for that. If you're deeper than me, this can set up a nice lighter base to put eyeshadow on over top of so that your shadows pop just a little bit more. It's just, it's wonderful. It does all the things an eye primer is supposed to do. It helps my makeup to last longer. I Like I said, it mutes out discoloration on my skin tone. It's just everything I want an eye primer to be and I haven't found anything that I love more than this. For eyebrows, my friend, I know for a fact that there are low cost eyebrow pencils that are just as good as the ones that I'm about to show you. But the problem is, I haven't tried one in a long time because brow products is one of the most frequent things that I get sent to me in PR from more expensive makeup brands. So my favorites are all more expensive makeup brands right now. And I don't know which ones are like the top brow pencils right now from the more affordable brands. So I'm going to just be honest with you. And I would pick one of these three. Honestly, like if I'm going to be a hundred percent 100%, I would probably pick the Give by Gwen Stefani brow pencil as the one that I would buy. I love this freaking thing here, this right here. It goes on so well. You just take it like this and you put it, I put it right here and it fits my brow perfectly. And then I turn it, it's what I'm wearing today. And then I turn it and I go like that and it's just perfect. And it doesn't like cake up in my brows, it doesn't pull my brow hairs out. It's wonderful. And then of course it's got the spoolie on the back. I'm gonna need one of those and it's just, it's just a fantastic brow pencil. So this is probably the one that I'm going to say that I would buy. But other ones that I absolutely love, the Precisely My Brow by Benefit, and then also the, um, the Gimme Brow by Benefit is also really good. And then the Makeup by Mario brow pencil is also fantastic. Brow gel, same stinking thing. I have not been able to find something from the drugstore that I like as much as this. This is the Fluff Up Brow Wax by Benefit absolutely fabulous. This is what I would purchase. I don't want to not have this. If I absolutely had to get something else, this does not compare completely, but it's still a good brow gel. This is the Essence Fix It Like a Boss brow gel. This is relatively new and it's good. It's a good brow gel. Not as good as this one. Doesn't hold my brows quite as well, but it's still good. Eyeshadow. Remember, I'm on a budget here, so I'm trying not to buy like 
all of the things. But what I would probably invest in is these nine pan palettes by ColourPop. This is the one I'm wearing on my eyes today. This is Petals and Point, and I have it all over my lids today. These are just so consistently good. So I would probably start with That's Taupe, honestly, to be 100% with you. But then I would start investing in ones like this, like Petals and Point and Sage the Day. This one is also really nice. I think that you can just build up a nice base of colors with these monochromatic palettes. They also sell some of these at Target. I think I have a green one like right here. I do. This is the fresh greens one you can get at Target. It's slightly different than Sage the Day, but it's the same kind of thing. And if I had to pick between the two, I would probably pick Sage the Day. But they're both good. They're both good. You really just have to decide which color story you like better, but they're very similar. For eyeliner, this was a discovery I made over the holidays, so that's why it's Christmas themed. <laughs> this is the Wet n Wild Pen Eyeliner. I am in love with pen eyeliners. This is my thing. This is a fantastic, fantastic blackity black, black, black eyeliner. It doesn't smudge on my outer corners. It could flake off a little bit. Like if I rub the corners of my eyes, it might flake off, but it doesn't smudge. So I'm cool with that. I'm fine with that. And y'all told me that the regular one that's not the Christmas one is exactly the same. I will link the regular one down below because I'm sure the Christmas one is no longer available. But as an alternative to this, my oldest kid Phoenix absolutely loves the Ulta brand one. If you've ever seen them, they do these amazing wings and I get them like three at a time when I buy them for them at Ulta because they go through them. They wear this like dramatic black eyeliner every single day. So that is another one that I would definitely recommend. I've used it before, really enjoyed it, but Phoenix swears by it. So I trust them, their opinion on that one because they're kind of an eyeliner expert at this point. Mascaras, y'all know I'm a big fan of Essence mascaras. I'm kind of stuck between these two to be 100% with you. I'm gonna decide though. I'm gonna make a choice as I describe these. I wanna disclaim right here that I do not have a smudging problem with my mascara. It never happens. So if you have mascara smudge on you, don't take, don't listen to me right now because I have no opinion on that and I can't tell you whether these smudge or not. And I think I'm pretty sure people in the community have told me that both of these smudge. But what I can speak to is length, volume, and also flaking. Neither of these will flake and they both provide length and volume. So this one is the False Lash Effect Mascara. That's the Lash Princess. And this is the new one called Lash Like a Boss. And both of them are great. This one's going to be a little clumpy a little thicker. So this one is gonna give you just a little bit more volume. This one's gonna amp you up a little bit more on length, but still give you some volume. The wands are very different. Lash Like a Boss is curved like a that. And all of the Lash Princess wands are different. This one is straight, which I don't love, but I love the formula. So if honestly, if I had to pick between these two, like I'm sitting here like really, really thinking, I think I'm still going to stick with this one. I do because the clumpy factor on this takes a little bit of extra work. And also because my lashes are so short, I feel like I need the little bit of extra length more than I need the little bit of extra volume. That's just me personally, but they're both fantastic mascaras. For blush, I have lots of favorite blush formulas that I think are wonderful. A lot of them are more expensive. But if I had to pick lower cost, I'm gonna go ColourPop again. These new press blushes are fantastic. I'm wearing this one on my cheeks today. This is called Out and About. It just is the perfect amount of pigmentation for me. They have a really nice shade range over there. Lasting power is great, blendability is great. They're just really nice blushes. If I had to pick a second place for this, I would probably go with Milani. I feel like they have really, really nice blushes at a lower cost. They tend to be just a little bit more pigmented and take a little bit more elbow grease to kind of like and blend it out on my face, uh, especially if it's a more pigmented blush. So I feel like ColourPop beats them out on that, but they're also really good blushes with really good lasting power. And if you want more pigmentation, I would pick the Milani over the ColourPop. And then I got to thinking, I was like, okay, highlighter and bronzer. I'm gonna be 100%, I would not buy either. 
If I was like straight up, just starting from scratch, trying to get a basic thing going, I wouldn't get either one. What I would do if I really wanted a highlight, especially in the inner corners, I would end up just using the ColourPop palettes for highlight, just like a little bit on the cheek, a little bit in the inner corner. I mean, if you look at these, like you could use this guy for a highlight, you could use this guy for a highlight. In a more natural palette, there's probably gonna be more naturally looking highlights, but, um, but yeah, I would just skip it as far as just like a pressed highlighter. I don't feel like I really Really need it in my life like I would want it eventually I would get it but not off the jump I would let it go same thing with bronzer I feel like like blushes like this from Colourpop I don't really feel like I need necessarily a bronzer I'm not really big on contouring my face but the bronzers from Colourpop are pretty good they apply exactly the same as the blushes they're great but do I need this no I don't need this eventually I would probably get it though for lips I am big on comfort for my lips, you need to know this in order to take my review seriously. I don't care as much about lasting power as I care about comfort. So that is what I based my choices on. So where I went was Milani. These have been a favorite of mine for a while. I'm now thinking, I'm hoping that they are still available. These are the, I always have to look it up because it's not on here and it makes me so mad. <laughs> I have to look it up. I always have to look up what they're called. It's something sexual, but I can't remember. <laughs> You'd think that I would know by now the number of times I've talked about these lipsticks. Oh my gosh, I, I just opened up DoorDash. <laughs> That was by accident. I just want to know what it's called. Sold by Walgreens, Milani Lipstick Lingerie. I don't think that's what they're called. That's not what I want. I don't want DoorDash. No, do not deliver. Here they are. Okay, this is what they're called. They're called Color Fetish. I knew it was something sexual. I just couldn't think of what it was. They're 10 bucks. If I had to pick shades, I would probably pick these two, one a little lighter, one a little deeper. This one is in the shade Pleasure, and this one is in the shade Sensual. So then I could mix them together if I wanted it somewhere in the middle. As a secondary, again, gotta go with ColourPop. These are the Luxe Creme Lipsticks. These are fantastic. This is what's on my lips today. It's from their chocolate collection. This is the shade Ganache Queen. It's all over my lips, and then I tapped a little bit of this shade from the ColourPop palette in the center just to kind of give it a little bit more juiciness. And as far as lip liners, I wouldn't buy those either. Uh, I very rarely use lip liners because I'm lazy as hell and just li lining lips takes skill for me. I'm not symmetrical and it looks weird. So <laughs> So sometimes I'll use them if I'm worried about a lipstick bleeding, but other than that, I really don't use a ton of lip liners. And also a lot of them can be very dry on the lips. And like I mentioned, I don't really care as much about lasting power. I care about comfort and I get that from these lipsticks. So I don't really necessarily need a lip liner off the jump. Would I eventually buy lip liners? Probably, just not from right away. And then for lip gloss, Phoenix actually stole my clear one of these. <laughs> I would probably just buy the clear. This is the Essence Extreme Shine Volume Lip Gloss. These are wonderful. They're very comfortable. They have a nice lasting power. They feel good on the lips. They pair well with lipstick. Like they're just, they're just good. But I would get the clear. And the reason why is because I do that thing. You might've seen me do this before, but just in case you haven't, because it's magical. Random clear gloss. And I just glop a bit, bunch of it on my hand and just kind of blomp, blomp it like that. Eventually I would probably get the Pleasing by Harry Styles lip glossy stuff. It's called a gloss medium. Eventually I would get that, but not right away. I would just get a cheaper clear gloss. And then you can take any color and turn it into a lipstick. So if like I've, I wanted, let's say, hmm, let's find a good one. Let's just do this guy right here. This one's probably going to be pretty nice. And we just go like at ease. And then there's my lipstick right there. So this would give me so many different options of lipstick depending on the eyeshadow palettes that I chose to buy. And actually, let me just put this on right now just so you can see. Uh, uh, uh. I actually kind of like that better <laughs> than the one I had on earlier. And it just feels good, it's comfy, and it's a new shade of lipstick. So yeah, I probably wouldn't buy any colored glosses off the jump. I would probably just buy the clear and then mix it with eyeshadows to make tinted glosses. And then finally, this is a little extra. I may not buy this from the beginning, but because of my job, I probably would. Let's just be honest here. False lashes always and forever, there is one style of false lashes that will have my heart and soul, and it is the Ardell 120s. 
always and forever. It is the pair that I have on my eyes today. It is just the perfect lash for my eye shape. It's a little shorter on the inside and a little longer on the outside, which is my preferred style of lashes. I feel like it opens my eyes up really big. And then I would also purchase some duo lash glue, just some basic duo. It took me a while to get used to using this because I feel like you do have to let it dry a little bit or else it ends up making a mess all over your lids. But what's great about the Ardell 120s is they have that little teeny tiny clear band on there. If it's if it's on a, a thick black band, it takes forever to dry, but I feel like on this little tiny clear band, it doesn't take nearly as long. So this pairing is my absolute favorite and would definitely purchase neither of them or obnoxiously priced. Did I get everything? I think I got everything. I did. I got everything. That is my full face. So I am going to put the total on the screen. Now I know that it's high. I know it has to be. I haven't added it up yet in real time. I'm going to do that as I'm editing and making the links for down below. I know that it's still a lot. Like, but a full face does cost a lot. If I had to narrow this down to things I would need immediately, I would get a foundation. I would get one eyeshadow palette. I would get an eyeliner. I would get a mascara and I would get the clear gloss. And that would be where I would start with just these things. But I wouldn't get Sage the Day. I would probably get its taupe first, but does Jen know where its taupe is right now? No. Is Jen an organized person? No, because Jen has ADHD and that's just what happens with us sometimes. <laughs> so really as a basic, that is the cost of what I would buy first and then for the full face, it's the bigger number. But at this point, my friend, it is your turn in the collective brain of makeup awesomeness where we help each other not to buy crap and to buy things that are totally worth it. I would love to know your thoughts about my picks. I know last time I did a video like this, I was roasted even by my own friends. As far as us having very different makeup tastes, which is fine. But the thing is, the, the joy, the joy of being in a free place is that you can do what you want and we can all have different preferences and love different things. So your thoughts down below are wonderful. That's how we all learn from you in the collective brain. Nobody is right or wrong. It's all about preferences, but either way, whether you agree or disagree, Agree, I would love to know your thoughts down in the comments down below. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button. It really does help me out so much. But if you would like to hang out a little bit longer, you're not ready to go, YouTube should be recommending a couple videos for you right over here to watch, including one I picked out for you special. YouTube picking the top one for you based on your viewing history. But if you do need to go, no problem at all. Thank you for hanging out as long as you did. And mad love to you, and I will see you in a video very, very soon. Bye!